The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how you can use Blender to generate terrain for simulation in the Gazebo Robotics Simulator. The first step I'm going to do in Blender is just to delete the basic cube that shows up, so hit X to delete it. We're going to start by adding a plane to represent the ground. Zoom out using the mouse, and then we're going to scale the plane up by hitting S and extending it out a couple times. Once we have this, the plane about the size we want to be, we're going to start modifying the actual plane vertices. So t hit tab to go from object mode to edit mode. We're going to sub subdivide this plane. So you can right click on the plane, click on subdivide, bring up the subdivide options, and let's bring the number of cuts up to 10. And then let's Subdivide again, bring it up. Now we can actually start modifying the displacement of these vertices to get the terrain that we want. Um, let's start by using proportional editing, which you can enable by hitting the button up top there. Pick a vertex to manipulate. Now hit the G key. and you can pull that up. And you can see it's only modifying the vertices within the influence of that radius in proportional editing. So we can use the mouse wheel to increase that influence and affect more vertices at once. Using this technique, you can pretty easily generate the terrain that you want. And you can even select multiple by box selecting and you can create some pretty interesting terrain just doing using this technique. If you want to move in only one axis along in, X, in the XYZ axis coordinate system, you can hit while you're moving the Z, X, or Y keys and move in that direction. In this case, it usually makes sense just to to move in the z-axis. And if we hit tab, it'll get us out into object mode where we can see our, our mesh. There's another way you can also add, modify this mesh using the sculpt tools. And this is more like using clay and molding it with your fingers. So if we go up to object mode, we switch to sculpt mode. We have a whole set of tools on the left side here. So some of the very common ones are draw, and in this you basically can draw up terrain. And you can change the radius here if you want that to be larger or smaller. Some other important ones to try out would be the flatten. You can kind of flatten out this terrain. Um, let's see, we've got fill, if you want to fill in a hole a little bit. And you kind of have to like paint it around in circles typically to and try different motions of the mouse to get the effect that you want. Um, another one is boundary. If I wanted to take this boundary and kind of make it so that my robot can't leave this box easily, I can create a boundary just by selecting an edge and moving this in different directions. Finally, when you're done and you have the general shape that you want, we're not going to be adding a texture to this because Gazebo has a, a system for adding textures to generic meshes. So at this point, you just have to export to a DAE file. So you select your, your plane, file, export, and we're going to export to a Collada DAE file. And then just save that where you want to go. Now that you have your mesh file representing your terrain as a DAE file, you need to integrate it into a directory that Gazebo will be able to load in. Um, start off by creating a directory with some name that's unique. So 
my directory is called terrain underscore one. And in that you have a number of files that are very specific, such as model.config, model.sdf. Uh, you'll also see that the, the terrain.dae is in here underneath a media directory. And there's also a grass.png, which will represent the image texture that will be placed on top of the DAE file. We can briefly look through some of these files so you know how to change them when you bring in your own mesh file. So in model.config, this is mostly just some high-level information for Gazebo. Uh, you have the name of the terrain. Uh, you've got a version if you want to keep track of that. You have a relative path to the model.sdf file that Gazebo will load in. You have some author information and a description if you'd like. So look at the model.sdf file. And in this, you can see um, in order to use your own terrain file, all you're really going to have to do is go in and edit the paths that say have the model in front of them, change the terrain underscore one to whatever your name is, and change the DAE file name. You're going to want to change any of those other paths that you'll find, such as under the scripts directory for the textures. You can leave the repeated grass diffuse if you want to use the image texture I already provided. And you will change the collision to use that model DAE as well. And this is important because this will allow, as your robot move, it moves over the train, the collision points will match up with what it is visually shown in Gazebo. Let's look at some other files. Under media, we've got textures. Here's the grass image texture that will be placed on top of your, your mesh. We have the terrain underscore one dot DAE file that we created and exported out of Blender. Under the scripts, we have this repeated dot material, and this is basically a, a shader that uses that grass.png file and places it on your terrain. So if you want to change grass to some other image texture, you could change that here and just make sure you include the proper PNG file in your directory. Now that you've created your directory for your train that can be read by Gazebo, you have to place the directory in a specific location for Gazebo to read it and import it. There are two primary ways of doing this. One is by placing the folder in the under your home folder dot gazebo slash models. And this is good if you're quickly testing a model, model directory to make sure you have it configured correctly. But it can be harder to share this model with other people. Another way is to actually incorporate it into a Ross Katkin package. And I've provided an example on GitHub of how to do this with our specific terrain that we've created. You can follow the installation instructions I have on the GitHub for installing and trying out this terrain. But I'll briefly go over some of the important files in the ROS package. Um, it's a pretty standard ROS Katkin package. Uh, the, mo the biggest distinction is that in the export of the package.xml, you have to make sure that you export the gazebo model path and gazebo media path variables in order for gazebo to find your custom package. The CMake list is pretty standard. You just want to make sure that you install the launch models and worlds. The world file is pretty basic. It includes a, mo a sun model. It includes the terrain model that we've created. And we've also included the position and orientation for a camera at starting point. You might want to modify that, which is X, Y, Z, roll, pitch, yaw for the camera at start. Finally, in the launch file, we load the world file that we previously described. Then we load into the robot description ROS parameter the Husky's description that's converted from Xacro to URDF. And then we use the spawn model node to take that robot description and spawn its URDF into Gazebo. Now that our package is set up, we can build our package, make sure to source the devel setup.bash script, and we can now run our launch script to bring the train up in Gazebo. And here's our terrain. There is the clear path Husky robot. And we have it operating correctly in Gazebo. You'll probably see some error messages because we haven't really been careful about loading in everything that the, the Husky model needs. But that's uh, to be left for another tutorial. Thank you.